joined us last week. Good enough to join us again today on the scene. As always, Mark, how are you doing today? I see Gabby Dabrowski's off to a nice start in her match. So we'll start with the Ottawa native. How are you? Uh, I'm great. It's great to have uh, Gabby on TSN 5. Um, you know, it's doubles doesn't always get the limelight that singles does, but um, she is, as we talked about last week, one of the great ambassadors of the sport for the country. She's coming off a great come from behind victory in the third round just to get into the quarters. And uh, it was great having her on set after that win and just to, to talk about her play, uh, taking in the tournament, being a, obviously a big fan of Layla Andy Fernandez. They have played doubles together, so that's really special for her. And um, this Dabrowski has an opportunity here to win her first Grand Slam title in, in doubles. She's won a couple in mixed doubles. But, um, yeah, looking forward to seeing how she does today. All right. Uh, Gabby and her partner took the first set, 6-4, and they're uh, back on serve now early in the second set of that uh, quarterfinal match. So we'll continue to update now that that is uh, well underway. Uh, but we're going to go back in time to yesterday, Mark, and what a day it was uh, uh, for you to just to be there to cover that. You get to speak to them right afterwards as well. And it's not just us Canadians and sports fans that are taking notice. I mean, Magic Johnson is tweeting about Layla Fernandez. Uh, that's happening here. And Felix gets a bit of a walkover due to injury last night here. But let's start with Layla. And I asked you about her last week when she started to, you know, do some things and wondering, uh, you know, how far she could take this. I didn't see this coming. None of us did, to be fair. But I've watched more of her tennis in the last week than I have in her career so far. It's She sucks you in as a as a viewer of sports with her infectious energy on the court and how she always has that positive body language, whether it's going well or poorly in the moment. You know, how much fun is it to watch her in person uh, as she's on this journey right now? So much fun, you know, and it's one thing to be there when a Canadian does well. It's another thing when that Canadian also plays a, a style of, of play that is infectious to, to, to watch, to enjoy. I, I don't, I'm trying to find the, the right term to describe who she is. I don't charming assassin, like, because she sucks you in, as you pointed out, and she goes for those big shots and she has taken down three massive players here in Osaka, Kerber, and Spitalina, all players who are great. You're talking about two of them who have won this tournament before. And she's, she's done it in different ways. She's had to do it in different ways because they're all different opponents. And now she faces Sabalenka, who's a big server, and, and she'll try to do the same thing. She'll try to neutralize a big serve and frustrate her opponent. And she's done a very good job at frustrating her opponent and also done a very good job at winning over the crowd here. And it changed in the Osaka match where 20,000 fans arrived at Arthur Ashe Stadium there to see Naomi Osaka, the two-time U.S. Open champion, and they left talking about Leila Annie Fernandez. And they're all you know, so captivated by her. Just like the whole country right now is captivated by her. And, you know, I turned on ESPN Sports Center this morning in my hotel room, and there she is, you know, as one of the lead stories. And she was on the cover of the program. And how can you not fall in love with her story? And how can you not just admire the way that she's playing, how she's handling the pressure, handling the moment, and also living the moment and enjoying every, you know, part of this run. And I, I think that that has helped her a lot. And in some of these instances where she's had to really dig deep and find a way to get herself out of some issues and matches. Yeah. And earlier, Mark, I compared her kind of personality and the way she plays to Brooke Henderson, the female golfer that's kind of local to the Ottawa yeah. area. But the, the, I guess the humbleness, but the confidence that you could see uh, how when she needs to make those plays, she rises to the occasion and she gets it done and she battles and she doesn't quit. And then she's talking about being surprised to get there and, and just being so nervous. And it's like you don't see it in her because of the way she plays and she's just always in the match. And it's just so unique but so cool to see. Yeah, and – and even before this tournament, I would say that she's got this quiet confidence about her and that her standards are so high. And, and maybe now talking to her a little bit more through this run, maybe it's not so quiet because how many times has she said, you know, I, I believe that I belonged here from the get-go. I believe that I could beat o Osaka as soon as this match began. And it's kind of a bit of this confidence of walking onto the court and knowing you've put in the work and you've done the work, and you know that you have a game plan that if you execute it, you could be successful. 
And not every player has that. And I hear all the time about how Layla Annie Fernandez, I've only seen her play a couple matches, but I've seen her practice. And wow, is that a show that she puts on in practice? And, and not to make an unfair comparison, but the, the same thing is said about Rafa Nadal. So I don't know if we're going lefty to lefty. And, and I know that she looks up to Nadal, who doesn't look up to Nadal. But you watch his practices, and you, you're breaking a sweat just standing there. Um, she's kind of the same way. And she knows that she's had to outwork every player because she's not six feet tall. And she can't, you know, hit the, the biggest booming shot on tour. Although some of her shots, she gets a lot of power. And she just runs you off the court. And, I, again, she should be the underdog in the semis. But then again, why, like, she's going to make us all look stupid again by saying that she won't win. So I, she's got a great chance at making a Grand Slam final, which, like all of you guys, I did not say a couple of days ago. Oh, it's it, it's been so much fun, though. So you, you're you on site, and you, you've had the opportunity with your coverage, Mark, to, you know, watch this in person, but also I've watched a lot of your coverage. Just pick the brain of a who's who in tennis and, and talk about not just Layla but other Canadians, but just to stay on point with Layla. From what you have surmised here, one of the most impressive things for me is she is not a huge human being. She generates a lot of power out of that frame. Is it rhythm, technique, footwork? You know, how is she able to, um, you know, fire back and go toe-to-toe with ground strokes with, with some women that are known for that? And I don't know, is she surprising some of her opponents with her power right now? Probably. I think that she's part of being, uh, and she's not a rookie, but... Uh, the first time that she's gone on a real serious run at a Grand Slam, part of that is the unknown. And maybe Bianca had that a bit two years ago. Um, it's, you know, the fact, A, the fact that she's a lefty. Nobody likes playing lefties. Lefties don't like playing against lefties. So <laughs> right then there, it, it's already, it's always a difficult opponent to try to face. And now you're trying to figure out, okay, how is this teenager doing it? And, and if you're, you know, say you're her next opponent, okay, this is how she beat Osaka, but then she kind of switched things with Kerber and, and does she have this shot? Um, so I think it is a little bit of the unknown as well. But in terms of the power, the thing that I've heard a lot about is just she's got good footwork, footwork. She's obviously got a lot of speed. So she's often in the right position to kind of load up and hit those shots. And then you're seeing those patent kind of squats, getting herself all the way down to the ground and firing off a, a forehand from like, you know, four or five inches off the ground. And kind of like what we've seen from Angelique Kerber uh, throughout her career. So I think a lot of that is just leg strength, you know. And, that, again, it goes to the training that she's had to go through. It's, you know, her team, which is led by her father and coach, Jorge, have been very meticulous. And, okay, if, if this is what we want, which is being, you know, a top 20 or 10 player and, and winning Grand Slams, this is what you're going to have to do. This is how you're going to have to win. And they, they've often looked at Justine Ennin, who is, you know, was a great player, won multiple Grand Slams, and she wasn't big either, but she mm. found a way to do it. And so it, it's kind of finding what works for you, what has worked for other players, and kind of putting that all together. And, and all that work now has all come together and resulted in this run. Yeah, and, and before we get to Felix, I just want to ask you on a personal level for someone that's covered, you know, so many of the major slams and, and tennis for a little while now, how exciting is it for you to just be there and see Leila Annie Fernandez and Felix and, and all the Canadian success and hearing the comments from John McEnroe about, you know, Canadians are hockey players and, and not tennis players, but just being there and around, and I'm sure you're getting your brain picked a bit from some other people about who these kids are and who everyone is, but the excitement level it is for yourself and just you know, being such a huge fan of the game, how awesome it is to see Canadians having the success they are right now with Layla and especially Felix and and even Gabby Dabrowski at that time now. Well, what Canadian doesn't like hearing that an American is envious of them, right? <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's always fun. Uh, that's kind of a flaw <laughs> we have. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, and we're getting it a lot, and we got it a couple of years ago. You know, I, I used to work at the NHL Network, and I remember stepping on to the ice uh, as for one of the first interviews when the Blackhawks won the Stanley Cup in their building and thinking, it doesn't get any better than this. This is unbelievable. And then two years ago, walking out of the court, and Bianca had just beaten Serena, and the whole crowd who was there to cheer on Serena is now giving her a standing ovation how loud that building was and thinking, okay, this, this is the best. And now Layla Annie, and, and not to, I don't want to make an unfair comparison. They're different runs. They're different people. Um, 
from Osaka to Kerber and now Spitalina, it just seems to get louder and louder. And it, it just, you're right. Like I, we're all privileged to have the jobs that we do. Um, but to be able to be out there to do that walk and to kind of soak it all in and then also remember I have a job to do and I should probably know what I'm going to ask her <laughs> um, is, is a fun problem to have. And, and it's, uh, again, I'm so lucky because not only are these Canadians doing well, uh, they're so great in these interviews. Like it's, uh, I, you, you try to do your best with asking good questions, but really it's good answers and they're having fun with it. They're showing off their personalities and, um, you know, usually it makes for great television, and I just I'm lucky to have a good seat for all this, and let's hope that the Canadians can get a couple more wins, and we we can continue to talk about this. Mark Rowe is joining us uh, from the U.S. Open. So to Felix now. So the 21 year old beat the 18 year old last night, and I gotta say I was beat. I stayed up for Bianca the other day to start the work week here because we weren't on on. So I'm up to 2:20 in the morning. I was a little beat. I, I'm not taking a nap yesterday. I want to watch Layla. I'm pushing through in four hours sleep for the whole day. I, I wasn't yeah. that disappointed when Alcaraz said I'm done, and I and I said, well, uh, great, I'm done too. Um, so it's unfortunate to see an athlete you not know, be able to finish there, but you know Felix will take it, and now he's off to the semis. You know what what has Felix been doing well at this tournament in particular to be on this run, and he's got a chance to go to the final. Uh, first and foremost, his serve has been unreal. Um, it gets him out of trouble any time that he is in trouble. Um, it keeps him in control. The moment he got that break in the first set, you felt like there was no going back at that point. Uh, I think that his net game has been maybe the bigger story, that suddenly he feels a little more comfortable going to the net. So when you follow that up with a big surf, suddenly your opponent you know, has to hit a great passing shot. And sometimes you know, players can do that on Felix, but it, 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 it takes a lot to be able to do that consistently. And again, I think consistency is also the big word. We have talked so many times about Felix with a great performance, and then the next match, it's what happened there, you know? And, and we've seen glimpses of why everyone says this guy's going to win multiple majors. The fact that he has now had five consecutive matches and played well is huge. Um, it's a great opportunity now against Medvedev that he's playing this well to be tested against who I think on this surface is the best player not named Novak Djokovic, um, to, to, get, um, to give you a little bit of behind-the-curtains kind of look here, we were also a little happy that that match ended quickly yesterday because we were here for Bianca, and we waited until Bianca... <laughs> you had to work. Came, well, <laughs> she came out of the trainer's room, and some players say, no, Moss, I'm not talking to the media. She came out and... Uh, we, we did an interview with her in our heads at the pillow at 4 a.m. that night, and then we were back here in the morning. So, um, yeah, I, again, we had, we had to scramble to get down on court, to be honest with you. We were not in position whatsoever. Nobody was in position. ESPN was kind of, you know, running around with their chickens cut, cut, uh, heads cut off. So, um, anyways, yeah, it, it's not the way you want a match to end, but there was no doubt who's going to win that match, I believe. And uh, it just gives them maybe a, some extra time to recover for what will be a huge match in the semifinals. How much do you think that's going to play a factor, too, uh, uh, heading into a, a more favored Medvedev? But the fact that Medvedev played four full sets and, you know, Felix got a, an early exit, you're later on in the tournament. How much of a factor do you think it plays into their matchup? Uh, probably only a little. Like, they get the extra day off, so they don't play till Friday. So that should be more than enough time. Although, if, if, you want to get honesty from players, any chance they can get to not play an extra set, they'll take it at this point because they've, you know, they've been out played five matches and they're near the end of the season. So it helps, but I think both players will be relatively fresh for a semifinal and I'm, I can't wait for it. Um, I joked on court with Felix, I feel bad for the tennis ball because they're going to tear the cover off of that thing. Like it's going to be big shot after big shot. And again, it, this is a great, like the timing is great for Felix to test his game against such a great player in Danil Medvedev, who reached the U.S. Open final just two years ago. Yeah, we, we say big boy hockey when two physical teams uh, hook up. That's going right. to be big boy tennis. That's, that's going to be a, a, a lot of fun to watch. And during that interview, um, just your thoughts on this aspect as well. Felix mentioned he has played him before in a tournament, but I thought it was interesting that he's practiced with him quite a bit. So there's a bit of course knowledge uh, between these two players through maybe their practice habits here. You know, I, I wonder what, you know, 
what, how that might factor in for both of those players. They would know each other a little bit more than some other players on tour having practiced together quite often. Yeah, and that's one of the unique things about tennis is that if you play on tour long enough, you probably practice with most, most players that you're going to play against um, just out of convenience or sometimes you're playing an opponent that has similar attributes to the one that you know, you're about to play. I, I think on top of that, having Tony Nadal, who's Rafa Nadal's uncle and obviously was his longtime coach before he retired from that position a few years ago, there for the experience and knowing what Rafa has done against Medvedev. And again, Felix and Rafa are different players. One's a lefty, one's a righty. I think that helps him a little bit too. And I, I think that is the biggest bonus to having Tony Nadal as part of your coaching team on top of Frederick Fontaine, who's been there for a few years now with Felix, um, to pick his brain about not just playing Medvedev, but okay, so I'm in a, I'm in a Grand Slam semifinal for the first time. Like, what should I expect? What, what will be different? What what are some of the, you know, what, what's the advice that you gave Rafa when he was 19 and 20 in, in the same situation? So I think that helps. Um, I think the book is out on all these guys at this point. They all know what their strengths and weaknesses are. So, um, you know, both guys know what they're going to try to accomplish, whether they are able to do it or not is another thing. Uh, but I, I think it's going to be a really competitive match. And, I, I, again, I like two weeks ago, if you had told me he was going to play Medvedev, I would have said, probably doesn't you know he'll probably lose maybe he'll push it to to three or to four or five sets i think felix has had a guy has a real good chance here to win the semifinal well and we thought a lot of things two weeks ago we didn't think layla would be going this far right. and uh <laughs> you know even if this is it for the, what what a what a fortnight here for canadian tennis uh as well and i just i just think of this be the last point today mark i always appreciate when you join us and I was discussing this earlier. I, I grew up a big tennis fan. I used to watch Wimbledon and U.S. Open and a little bit older. Uh, my guys were Mats Wielander and Stefan Edberg. And I followed the Canadian guys, but, you know, Andrew Snyder and Grant Connell and Glenn Michibata and going through that era, we, we didn't have it at this level. Um, like with this kind of golden age of tennis with both the men and the women here, what's this going to do for our youth in this country picking up rackets? Like I, you can't quantify that. What, what we're seeing right now at this particular U.S. Open with so many impressionable kids tuning in and cheering on Canadians. Yeah, and, and hopefully it just leads to more kids playing tennis and more kids sticking with tennis and seeing, you know, I'm a pretty good player, and if, you know, Bianca Andreescu, who's from my same hometown, can do it. Well, then why can't I do it? Or I'm from Montreal, and Felix Ojeda-Liassime is one of the best players in the world. Then maybe I got a shot as well. I, I think you're right. It's great. I think they all have been, and I'm going to use the, the term ambassador as well, again, like I did with Gabby, so well. And you saw that out of their mouth right away. Bianca, Dennis, Felix, they've all said it. You know, we want to inspire the next generation of, of Canadian tennis players. And Bianca said it after one of her matches when I talked about the success of the Canadians. She said, and the great thing is, we're all so young. You know, like, Bianca's 21. We kind of almost treat her like she's a veteran at this point. Felix is 21. Uh, you know, Layla just turned uh, 19. They, they, you know, God forbid any kind of serious injuries, they should be here all the time. Um, Dennis Shapovalov, to his standards, didn't have a great tournament. He'll be back, and he'll have more deep runs. Um, so this is great. This is great for the sport. And, again, let's hope that it just leads to more young athletes and maybe specifically more young girls. I know Tennis mm. Canada has, has a big marketing campaign right now. That the, the participation numbers really drop off around 12, 13, 14. And seeing a Layla Annie Fernandez play at this level on this stage hopefully keeps them playing a little bit more than we've seen in the past. And maybe inspire some around that age to pick it up uh, as well and, uh, yeah. and see where it goes as well. Mark, uh, as always, appreciate it, my friend. Thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll be following along. Thanks very much. Thanks so much, guys. I appreciate it. Have a great show.